uh, she would be considered a risk of not returning back to Iraq after her visit. We did manage to get six Iraqi women into the United States with great trouble getting our Congress people to pull all strings to get the visas. We took them around on a hundred city speaking tour, and then we did get great media locally when these women were able to tell their stories about how the U.S. invasion was destroying their lives, their country. We also thought, all right, what are other ways we can show what's happening to the victims? A simple way we came up with was taking shoes, labeling with them with the names of Iraqis who had died, and taking them to public places and standing vigil quietly outside of libraries, outside of public places, outside of the offices of the Congress people who keep voting for money for this war. But we were so frustrated by what was happening in Washington and the huge disconnect between what the American people wanted and what the people in Washington were doing, especially after 2006 when we voted in a new democratically controlled Congress and they still weren't doing what we wanted them to do, that we opened a house in Washington, D.C., a five-bedroom code pink house that has been the center of uh, every day constant going out into the hill to tell Congress to respect the rights of the people. We go into these hearings, and never before in these hearings had they seen the public going in and doing things like this. And they don't know what to do with this. Tell his stories. 
Um, we do something called extreme lobbying. We go into the offices of our Congress people, sometimes dressed like this. Um, we had a very successful campaign around Hillary Clinton. We brought, uh, brought 100 people into her office to do a sit-in and wouldn't leave until they brought her off of the floor of the Senate to talk to us. And this was right after she had done her terrible vote. And we did a video of our meeting with her that then became something that the media used constantly to say what Hillary Clinton was saying about being proud of her vote for the war. And I think this helped in really distinguishing between Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama as Hillary, someone who not only voted for the war, but until she found out how popular it was, continued to justify her vote for the war. We started a campaign called Listen Hillary. We did everything like sneak into her fundraisers. When we couldn't walk in, we went in in, in uh, caterers' uniforms, <laughs> went in straight into the restaurant, and popped out from behind in the kitchen. <laughs> In the only town hall meeting that she's had in the last two years, we stood there the entire time during her talk to show that her constituents wanted her to stop funding the war. And when she said impeachment wasn't on the table, we went to her house. We've camped out in front of her house. We've done fast, 30-day fast. This woman did a fast to try to get a meeting with Joe Lieberman. Every day went into his office. He wouldn't meet. He wouldn't meet. Finally, one day she collapsed on the floor of his office. The uh, 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 ambulance came in to get her. The media took a picture of that. It was on the front page of Roll Call magazine. The next day she got a meeting with Joseph Lieberman to say, we do not want you to be talking about invading Iran. That is obscene. Stop doing it. Um, we get arrested many times. This was during the joint session of Congress when the Prime Minister of Iraq came and started speaking about how the Iraqi people want the troops there. I got in, I don't, can't tell you how, but um, I got out there to say the Iraqi people want the troops to leave, bring the troops home. This was during the Republican National Convention when don't ask us how we got in there, uh, and my co-founder, Jody Evans, took off her dress, and there she was wearing a pink slip and started talking uh, while, while uh, during Bush's uh, acceptance speech. Um, sometimes we get arrested in uh, different kinds of uniforms. This was in uh, Condoleezza Rice speech. This is an example when we try to find a target like Halliburton. How do you get the media to cover something when Halliburton has no visible place for you to go? This was in front of their office, but the media didn't come to cover it. So we went and dressed up as our version of Halliburton uh, lobbyists and went through the halls of Congress thanking them for the billions of dollars they gave.
about life and death issues, we feel it's an report important to reflect the kind of community we want to have. And it is this community and the love and joy that we bring into our work that is the vision we would like to see in the rest of the world. Thank you very much.